everyone, good morning. I'm meteorologist Sarah Spivey. Today on Science with Sarah, we're at Tomlinson Elementary School with these awesome second graders. We're gonna make snow in a jar, and we say good morning, San Antonio! Stick around for that. <laughs> Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday, March 22nd. I'm chuckling because right before we start began the newscast, Justin was checking his earpiece and it went thunk. Like parts of it just kind of fell out on the Everywhere. desk. I mean, they're not exactly yeah. durable sometimes. It, no. It's together now. Uh, yes. yes. It is. Yeah, it's you're working, good. I think it yeah. is. It is. Uh, okay, good. Justin, can you hear us okay over there? I can't. Good. I think we're good. Yeah. Oh, man. It's a Wednesday. Feels like a Wednesday. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what we got going on as far as pollen count is concerned. We just got that in, and I want to let you know that mold has jumped up to 850. It's in the moderate category. All that drizzle, yeah, it's uh, increased the mold level. Oak is still there, too. It's moderate at 360, and then we've got hackberry and mulberry showing up as well. Here's your forecast for today. Yes, it's a, it's a little damp out there this morning. Not as damp as yesterday, though. Uh, the drizzle isn't as intense. And we'll see the drizzle start to go away, but the clouds hang around through about 2 o'clock or so before temperatures make their way up to around 80 this afternoon. Mostly cloudy. And we'll see those southeasterly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Some headlines for you as uh, we look outside. Still kind of uh, a little bit foggy in spots. So drizzle. One more day of it. We've got drizzle tomorrow, and then we'll be done because we'll get some drier air working in. What about the storms? We've been talking about those last couple days. We will see some storms out west tomorrow night, but the risk for severe weather is decreasing here in San Antonio. And in fact, our rain chances are decreasing a little bit. We'll talk more about that. Plus that dry air I was speaking of, it arrives Friday and we'll have some beautiful weather on Saturday. More on that forecast in just a bit. Let's get over to Stephen now. The roads aren't as slick as yesterday, so hopefully less crashes. Oh, well, Justin, one could hope. Uh, but unfortunately, we did have our fair share of trouble out there on the roadway this morning, 410 being the big problem spot. Now, right now, things look clear, but uh, earlier in the morning, we had a pretty serious crash that forced an area of the highway to be shut down for a period of time. In fact, San Antonio police were also urging drivers to avoid the area for some time. Let's see if we can get a look at that video from earlier on the scene. We actually had a, this is our trans guide camera from earlier. Uh, we had our editors roll on that. You could see those first responders blocking several lanes of traffic. Now this crash came in sometime just after six this morning. According to police, a driver of an SUV was actually traveling southbound just past Bandera Road when a vehicle in front of him actually swerved. That's when police say the driver struck a woman who was standing on the highway. Now that driver's SUV was then hit by another vehicle from behind. It's police tell us the driver lost control and actually went off the highway before coming to a stop on the Axis Road. Now that vehicle that struck the SUV actually sped off with that with without stopping, and unfortunately that driver's not been found, but the woman who was struck was fortunately able to get up. Uh, she did go to the hospital by ambulance just to be checked out, but thankfully the situation there wasn't as bad as uh, you know, as uh, we were thinking there, but unfortunately it did lead to big delays, and again, this was on the northwest side near Bandera Road. Obviously it blocked off several lanes of traffic, but the situation much better now, guys. Let's get a look at 10 at Brazos. You can see things have cleared out pretty nicely there, uh, but 410 has been a big problem spot throughout the morning. Things. Uh, we had a few crashes that also popped up and some stall vehicles, uh, but things also seem to be clearing out there, but can't say the same for I-10 eastbound at Loop 410 near Crossroads. A crash reported out there that has been causing trouble. We did have another minor crash reported uh, 410 northbound near State Highway 151. That's already cleared out, and really what we're going to start to see now uh, is a lot more green, and uh, that's some good news, but we always like to keep you up to date even when there's a few stalls like that in the downtown area. What I'd like for you to do is scan the QR code with your phone. That takes you to our case at traffic page. We have a full list of any any incident that pops up on our highways, so make sure you have your notifications turned on. We'll keep you posted before you hit the roads. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. City Council will be tackling some big issues today, especially in the wake of the deadly dog attack last month. Mayor Ron Nierenberg said during today's City Council meeting, they will be hearing a comprehensive plan from Animal Care Services to try and prevent another dog attack from happening. That's right. Mayor Nierberg says they want to address future issues so the city can coordinate resources. We'll be at today's council meeting and bring the latest in our um, later newscast and coming up on KSAT.com. And here's a look at today's 9 at 9. All eyes on Manhattan as a New York grand jury could deliver charges against former President Donald Trump for his role in alleged hush money payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels. The grand jury convenes again today, but the Manhattan District Attorney has not indicated when or whether Trump could be indicted if he
he is this would be a first for a former U.S. president. Seven Virginian law enforcement officers and three hospital workers are now facing murder charges in the death of 28-year-old Ivo Otieno. The officers and hospital staffers are seen on surveillance video pinning Otieno down before officials say he died of asphyxiation. Otieno's family is now vowing to get justice. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell will be front and center this afternoon with his decision of whether another U.S. rate hike is on the way. Some analysts say the collapse of two U.S. banks this month could cause the Fed to hold rates steady and give the U.S. economy some breathing room. The death of a 19-year-old in South Carolina is being investigated again, this time as a homicide, after new evidence emerged during the Alex Murdaugh murder investigation. Murdaugh's surviving son, Buster, was classmates with the victim, Stephen Smith. Now, Smith was found dead in the middle of the road back in 2015, but his family was convinced it wasn't a hit and run. Authorities have not said that there's any specific connection to the Murdoch case, but they are investigating Smith's death further. The U.S. is accelerating the time it takes to ship Patriot missile systems and tanks to Ukraine. It comes as Ukraine prepares to launch a spring offensive against Russian forces. After training is complete here, the Patriot missile systems will be deployed to Ukraine in a matter of weeks. The FDA is considering whether to recommend another bivalent booster shot to prevent COVID-19. The agency might okay another booster for people at higher risk. That includes people over the age of 65 and people who have weakened immune systems. It's not clear when the FDA will make its decision. For the first time in more than a decade, home prices have fallen compared to the year before. The National Association of Realtors says the median price for an existing home nationwide dipped 0.2% in February. Sales of pre-owned homes were down more than 22%. After nearly two years of high inflation, many online shoppers are ditching premium goods and opting for cheaper products. We're talking about everything from groceries to clothing. High-priced goods across 11 categories of e-commerce have lost meaningful market share to low-cost alternatives. Google is letting more people have a chat with its new AI chatbot. The company now says users in the U.S. and U.K. are getting access to what it calls BARD, the AI that Google has been working on for several years. This comes after Microsoft started integrating technology from ChatGPT and its Bing search engine. And that's today's 9 at 9. In your other morning headlines, a Florida police officer gets hit by a car driven by a burglary suspect. And we're learning more about the possible origin of COVID-19. Plus, a sailing trip across the South Pacific could have ended much differently for four sailors. But let's begin with that story out of Florida where an officer was struck by a car. The scary moment was caught on camera. But before we show you the video, we do want to mention, while it may be hard to watch, that officer is live and is recovering. That's right. So this happened on Monday night in Sarasota. Officers were trying to set up a roadblock to stop a suspected burglar they had been chasing. Security footage from nearby shows a white car flying down the road, swerving around the park patrol car and hitting the officer, flipping him over that vehicle. And we watched the video this morning in our command staff meeting. It was, it was horrific. It was terrible. This person needs to be put in jail for what he did. He, he could have killed an officer last night and that would have been very unfortunate for us as a family. But we're really hoping that people watching the video can help us find out who this subject is. That's why we're putting it out there. Again, the officer did survive that hit and has already been discharged from the hospital. He is expected to make a full recovery. As for the suspect, the search continues. There's new evidence to support the theory that coronavirus originated in nature. A new analysis suggests animals susceptible to the virus that causes COVID were at a market in Wuhan, China in the early days of the virus. Researchers say samples positive for traces of the virus also contain traces of DNA from animals known to be susceptible to infection. They say this is evidence that live animals traded at the market could have passed the virus on to humans. Among the animals included in the analysis were raccoon dogs, red foxes, rabbits, cats, and dogs. Raccoon dogs are of particular interest because they shed a lot of viruses when they get sick from it and can transmit the virus to uninfected animals. And it's a story straight out of Moby Dick, a sailing ship sunk by a whale. It happened earlier this month in the South Pacific. As ABC's Andrew Dimmert reports, we're now hearing the crew members' survival, st survival story.
Welcome aboard Rain Dancer. This is her crew of misfits. Four sailors say they're lucky to be alive. Their once in a lifetime trip to French Polynesia nearly ended in disaster when a whale sank their boat. The crew of the Rain Dancer was 13 days into their three week journey. Captain Rick Rodriguez and his crew were eating lunch when they heard a bang. A crew member then saw a whale gushing blood. It was purely an accident. They can sometimes be coming up very quickly to get a breath of air and if there's a boat in the way, this type of accident can occur. With the vessel sinking quickly, the crew gathered supplies, jumped onto a lifeboat and dinghy, and activated a GPS beacon. Captain Rodriguez sent frantic texts to a friend saying, this is no joke, we hit a whale and the ship went down. And he added their coordinates. The crew was adrift in the Pacific for nearly 10 hours before they were finally spotted by another sailboat that came to the rescue. These people were extremely lucky. They had all the safety equipment that they needed on board. They were able to call for help and get help in a timely manner. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 909, 68 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at nine. The Spurs playing back-to-back -back road games yesterday and today. We're gonna have highlights from the game last night in New Orleans against the Pelicans. Plus, San Antonio's given a new restaurant a lot of love for its grand opening. Courtney Friedman introduces us to the owner of the city's first Ukrainian restaurant. And let's go check out what Sarah's doing and David there at Tomlinson Elementary School. Supposed to be making snow in a jar. Very interesting for the month of March. So we'll be tuning in very soon. Just about 9.13, pride and hope. That's what helped create San Antonio's first Ukrainian restaurant. One of the owners is from Ukraine, and many of her family and friends are still living in the war-torn country. She spoke with Courtney Friedman about how she's sharing her culture with San Antonio while supporting the people she loves from her home country. Much of Ukraine lies in ruins as the war there presses on. But when you walk into the new European Dumplings Cafe in Castle Hills, the first thing you see is this painted wall, yellow wheat and sunflowers at the bottom and blue sky above. This is represents the Ukrainian flag. This is make me like um, proud about my country. And I hope it will be back again soon, yeah. like clear, beautiful. Olga Vedekenyek grew up in Ukraine, moving to Oregon in 1993 in San Antonio a year and a half ago with her husband, Simon Gutierrez. She still has family and friends in Ukraine. We're from Bakhmut. They lost all their houses, I mean, everything. The couple now sponsoring seven Ukrainians, bringing them to San Antonio, including a family friend who was badly injured in the war. They fundraised many times for Ukrainian refugees. And Saturday, that community showed their appreciation when they opened the first Ukrainian restaurant in San Antonio. 300 people here. Tremendous amount of people showed mm -hmm. up. And not only Ukrainians, but Latinos and uh, Americans, you know, and blacks and Asians, and Muslims. They were all here supporting us. They were, mm -hmm. We would run out of food. And it probably won't be the last time they run out. The food is that good. This is yeah traditional Ukrainian borscht. And I mean, uh, when I was like a little girl, we was eating borscht every day. Oh my gosh, that's just comfort food. On day three of opening, customers were already coming back second and third times. I have a goosebump. Giving Veda Kenyak a true sense of hope for the people and land she loves so much. These doors are now officially open every Wednesday through Sunday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And you gotta come try it for yourself. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Let's look out there with live cam. 68 degrees, still kind of dreary. Um, I was telling Mark earlier, Justin, that I had a, a coat because it had a hoodie. You know, it's yeah. kind of misting out there, yeah. but I took it off because it was so hot. Yeah, it's, it's catch 22. <laughs> yeah. And I went outside yesterday afternoon because the sun came out for like five minutes. Right. I was really excited, and then the clouds came back. Uh, yeah, it came are. out for five minutes, and I was like, they were right, and then it yeah. went away. It went yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I saw it too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, similar setup today, guys. So we'll see the sun maybe pop out for a little bit this afternoon. It's not until Friday afternoon that the sun really comes out in full force, and that'll lead into a great weekend. Let's talk rainfall. We got a little bit yesterday. We almost picked up a quarter of an inch of drizzle, so that's a lot of drizzle, but still not a half an inch. So I want to take a look at how many days it's been since we've had a half an inch or more at the airport. In one day, it's been 48 days. But this is where you get into the astounding numbers. How long has it been since we've had an inch or more at the airport? 209 days. It's been since August of last year. And then how long has it been since we've had two inches or more? 524. That is a huge number. Now, it's not the record, but 
Uh, it is a very long stretch without a good significant rainfall here in San Antonio. It has been so, so long. And as we look at the month of March, you know, it hasn't been bad. We have been getting some rain here and there, but it just hasn't been the good, important, significant rain. We've only picked up 1.12 inches of, in March, and we are about a half an inch below average. So we'll see how things play out going forward. We do have some rain chances, but they're not looking great as far as how much rain we're going to receive. Friday morning, probably our best chance. We could see some a.m. showers and storms early in the day and then again some clearing late. And then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we have some small rain chances, but nothing that jumps off the page. It says we're going to get a good soaking rain. I'm sorry to say, so we're still waiting. As we go outside for you right now, 69 and cloudy. Dew point is at 67. We've got south southeasterly winds at about eight. Drizzles already let up, not as intense as it was yesterday. There still could be a few sprinkles out there in the next couple of hours, but uh, things are drying up some. 67 Kerrville, 70 in New Braunfels, 71 Gonzales, 71 Pleasanton. Around San Antonio, we're right at uh, 70 degrees there, and temperatures will continue to warm up into the mid 70s by the early afternoon. And then eventually, once we do get a little bit of sun late this afternoon, we should get into the 80s with a good southerly wind. 10 to 15 miles per hour, and then partly cloudy going into this evening before clouds return and we do this whole drizzle thing again tomorrow. Lots of humid air continues to feed up into Texas out ahead of this storm system, which isn't the one that actually is going to bring us rain. We're watching what's going on out west around California, where uh, there is a good rain right now uh, along a the, the coast with a strong low pressure system here. Rain and snow moving in along Cal the California coast there. And this will move east, and this is what's going to give us slip for some showers and storms as we get into Thursday and Friday. Although, as I said, the rain chances aren't as good as they once were. So by 4 o'clock today, clouds clear out some, then the clouds fill back in. Tomorrow morning, we do some drizzle again. And then by the afternoon, we see partly cloudy skies. And tomorrow will be a very warm day. Upper 80s, is a good bet here in San Antonio. Then by tomorrow night, this is midnight, we're starting to watch what's going on out west. Line of storms develops. By 4 a.m. Friday morning, moving into the hill country. But notice as it gets to San Antonio, just kind of breaks apart, sort of limps in here. And so I think all we're going to get out of this is a few showers, maybe a storm mid morning Friday. This is 10 a.m. And then quickly these uh, showers push east by midday. And by the afternoon, dry air is moving in and skies are clearing. Uh, the risk for severe weather is going to be Thursday evening, Thursday night, and mainly across the hill country and uh, well to our west. Notice San Antonio is not included in the dew point trend. Well, we'll get uh, lower dew points as we get into Friday and Saturday, but they do pop right back up Sunday and to Monday, which will lead again to some more rain chances. So here's how it looks. 87 tomorrow, windy, some drizzle early, then a chance of some showers and storms late Thursday night into Friday. 84 Friday, 81 Saturday, 80 on Sunday, and then another front brings some rain chances and cooler weather, by the way, Monday and Tuesday. As uh, we get into next week, we'll see some cooler mornings as well. Hey, that restaurant we showed right before weather, yeah. it's called European Dumplings Cafe. We failed to mention where it's at. It's at 2211 Northwest Military Highway oh. in Castle Hills. Good. Thought Very we'd good. want to know that. Let's talk sports for a minute. Spurs in New Orleans last night. First quarter, Mamu had it going on, making this alley-oop. Right here, coming up here. We'll catch up. Land score, 2 nothing, San Antonio. Then later on, he makes a 3, give the Spurs a 14-13 lead. He had 9 points first quarter, 20 for the game. Pelicans led after 1, 27-16. Second quarter, Mamu drives, scores left-handed off the glass. And the fouls, 3-point play. Spurs down 16. 37-21. Closing second, C.J. McCollum pokes the ball away. Then buries the three at the under, other end. Final points of the half. Pelicans led at the half. 64-39. Big lead. Third quarter, Trey Jones with the ball. Splits two defenders. Scores a lefty layup. Next play, cue up rookie Blake Wesley, who packs, picks off the ball. Goes back for a slam dunk with one-tenth of a second to go. Pelicans led after three. 91-65. Fourth quarter, Doug McDermott banks in a three. They had him smiling because he didn't call glass. Spurs played without Zach Collins, Keldon Johnson, Jeremy Sohan, and Devin Vassell, and it showed. Pelicans roll over the Spurs, 119-84. Ouch. No time to dwell, though. Spurs play at the Bucks tonight at 7, which could be another very hard game as Milwaukee is the number one team in the entire NBA with a record of 51 
and 20. Good luck, guys, and go Spurs go. Yes, go Spurs go. Time now, 921 and 69 degrees for now. Let's look out there at Tomlinson Elementary School. We're going to be checking in with Sarah and David with Science with Sarah. And you can see the jar there. They're going to be making snow in a jar. We'll be right back. After a two-week break, Science with Sarah is back. Today, Sarah Spivey and David Sears are on the far northwest side at Tomlinson Elementary. So they're with a group of second graders this morning, and I'm sure they're excited about today's experiment. We are. So how's it going out there, guys? Ooh. Well, they're not just second graders. They're very smart second graders. Yes. They've got all this figured out. They, they really have. they teachers behind them, too, so it's working. We're going to put on our goggles. Because you never know. Just Safety for first. looks. You know, y'all don't need no, any goggles, no. but we're just going to do it. Okay, right. so today we are making snow in a jar. Didn't it snow last week in the Hill Country? It did snow last week so in the Hill Country. this is kind of like what they got, we, we're going to make. Yeah, this is an experiment that shows about meteorology and density and that kind of stuff. So the first thing, you, just so you know, you need some water, you need some baby oil, you need water. some white paint, you need some glitter, and you need Alka-Seltzer mm. tablets. All right, David, so pour a little bit of water in this jar here. That's good. That's great. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to put a little white paint in here. Go white. ahead and, yep. And now mix it around right. with this spoon right. until it melts mix. or right. melts, melts, dissolves. Is the melt? No, it's going to dissolve. Is it hot? Hot paint? It's not. It's not even hot it's paint. It's not hot paint. No. All right, put a little glitter in there. This glitter is just going to be for looks. It's this exciting. Is be fun stuff. Yep. Okay, so that we'll, that's great. We'll mix I it up. I want mine to really sparkle. I like to get this glitter that kind of looks like snow, so it's a little iridescent right. and fun. So go ahead and mix it up, David. Y'all attention? Gonna happen. With the spoon, go ahead and mix it up. Oh, Good. Mix it up again. Yep. And then we're just gonna pour baby oil on top of this. So baby oil is lighter than water uh, in paint, so it should float on the top. And say when. All of it, David. Oh. All of it. Whoa. And if you don't want to get baby oil, you can use vegetable oil. I just like baby oil because it looks cooler, because it's clear. So here you go. You've got that clear baby oil sitting on top of the paint. The last thing you do, Alka-Seltzer tab, drop it in. And look out. And watch what happens. Slowly start to see. Look at that, David. You see how it's forming a cloud on the top? Y'all see that? My stomach feels better already. I know forms a cloud on the top, and then it starts to precipitate down as, quote unquote, snow. Isn't that neat? Wow. And oh, if you see want- the, 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 that snow that's falling right there? Yep, and if you want to double the reaction. Ooh, dug it. And we love to double a reaction here. Look at that. Whoa. Can y'all see that? Yeah. It's starting to form a cloud on the top, too. See? Isn't that neat? Y'all are gonna do that in just a second. So we are going to do this awesome experiment with these great second graders coming up soon. Are you guys ready? Yeah! All right, coming up, we'll be making snow in a jar. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to Tomlinson Elementary School. Wait, wait we are here with these second graders. We are get making snow in a jar. These guys at this table are going to drop their Alka-Seltzer tablet into the jar. Are you ready, guys? Three, two, one. Drop. Now wait and see what happens. Let's see what happens. Oh, what's happening? What's happening there? Uh, it seems to be fizzing. Fizzing? And it looks like it's starting to make little snowballs. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Did you expect that when you put that in there? Nope. <laughs> so it looks totally different than what you thought it was going to look like, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, look, you've got a great cloud going on at the top there. So it was kind of cloudy you like today. Did you think that was good? How do you like the sparkles in there, though? Pretty? Yeah. Pretty? Oh, you it's like great. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Y'all look good. So oh, my think? goodness. Did it happen the way you thought it was going to happen? No. It didn't? How did it happen? I thought. I thought it was going to the class, but it said that the snowballs. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What do, you, do you have snowballs? Let's see. Ooh, it's, oh, look. It's snowing both ways. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I like that. That's awesome. All right, good over there. All right. All right table two, are you guys ready? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Three, two, one. Drop it in there. Whoa. Do you feel cold with all the snow? 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Actually kind of, Whoa, look at yours. Kind of, kind of feel a little chilly? Yeah. With all that snow going on in there? The jar is actually cold if I feel it. Ah, oh, see? Oh, it actually it is. Oh, it is. Yeah. This is fascinating. You guys are Whoa, actually noticing a chemical so cool. reaction wow. that's happening. So, is it doing what you thought it was going to do? No. Yep. Yep. Oh, is there anything that. surprising? Yeah, cause like it started like going up and then bubble, but bu like bubbling really coolly. <laughs> That's awesome. It's awesome stuff, isn't it? What are you seeing in there? I'm seeing. Let's look in there. What do you see? I'm seeing that like the bubble reaction is like going up and then like uh -huh. it's making a little way down. So it's going up and then it's coming back down. So yeah. the bubbles are going up and then it's making the snow and then it's coming down. Do you see? Yes. It? Do you see the sparkly stuff? In there? Okay. No. Really. That's cool. That's cool. Table three, are you guys ready? Nice, huh? All right. Yeah? Let's okay, go. let's go. Three, two, one, blast off! Whoa! How cool is that? Oh, that's going great. Look at that. What's the stuff forming at the top? Snow. Snow, yeah. And bubbles. What does it look like? Does it look like a cloud at all? Yeah. yeah. So why did the baby oil sit on top of the water? Why did the water sink down? Because the water is lighter than the baby oil. Other way around. The water is heavier, right? Where's the water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the water in the jar? Where's the water in the jar? It's at the bottom, right? Yeah. So that means it's heavier. Good right? job. Awesome. Excellent work. Well, nice. Y'all have, have created a winter wonderland. Ooh, too bad we can't make a snowman out of that, though. What do you got? What do you think? It's like rotating uh, to up and just to put it back down. Yeah. yeah, that is so cool. Oh, yeah, what's up? It's like a little, um, it's like a lot of little snow people just jumping around. <laughs> snow people, that is awesome. Oh, my goodness. Did you name the snow people? No. Well, look, there's... Who is that? That looks like somebody, that looks like a friend of yours, doesn't it? <laughs> so guys, what did you awesome. think? Was this a fun experiment? Yes! Does everyone want to say hi to mom and dad at home? <laughs> hey! So for more awesome Science with Sarah experiments, you can go to ksat.com. All right, everyone, let's wave again, say goodbye. Say good job, give yourselves a round of applause. New finalist for best second graders ever yeah. in the history of ever. They did a great Good job. Good job, guys. I love the Are comment about the snow people. Yeah. Sarah and David, thank you guys. Thank you guys. Good job, Tomlinson Bye. Elementary yeah. School. Bye-bye. Now they have their Bye -bye. own personal snow globes out yes, there. Yes, they do. If only we could make snow to get more snow days, right? That's what the kids are hoping for. That's what they would like. That's what yeah, well, maybe a nice snow day, not a <laughs> terrifying snow day. Yeah, the parents like those as much as the kids do. Right. Uh, no snow in the forecast. It's going to be warm and muggy. We've got some drizzle out there still, but the drizzle is beginning to let up. It's just cloudy and sort of sticky. Let's go outside for you once again. There you see the scene over the airport. It's trying to thin out just a bit. 69 degrees right now. South, southeast Julie winds at about 8 miles per hour. There you look at the satellite picture, which shows all the clouds, and they stretch from uh, all the way from Del Rio over to Gonzales and Victoria, but there is some thinning in spots. So the sun could pop out. I, I think it does a little bit later this afternoon. Close to 70 right now in town. We've got 60s elsewhere. 71 Kennedy, 71 Gonzales, but 60s in the hill country. Uvalde, Carrizo Springs out to Del Rio. And around San Antonio, 67 in Holota, 69 right now, Port SA. Here's our case at 12 hour forecast. Cloudy at noon, 72. But the sun pops out this afternoon. That brings those temperatures up to close to 80 later today. And then we'll bring in some small rain chances again tonight as drizzle redevelops by tomorrow morning. Then we get the changes. We do get changes, some storms, a line of uh, showers and storms potentially affecting San Antonio Friday morning. We'll time that out for you and let you know what you can expect for the weekend coming up in just a bit. Thank you very much, Justin. Well, the big news we're waiting to hear about later today will be when the Federal Reserve Chairman addresses the media for the first time since the U.S. banking crisis erupted earlier this month. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, he'll also announce what they plan to do with interest rates. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell will be front and center Wednesday afternoon with his decision of whether another U.S. rate hike is on the way. Well, I think a quarter point's fine. Uh, me personally, I think the Fed should just go ahead and go to 50 basis points.
The Fed has raised rates eight times since March 2022. The most recent increase was in February when they went up a quarter point. Some analysts say the collapse of two U.S. banks this month could cause the Fed to hold rates steady and give the U.S. economy some breathing room. Treasury has said uh, has seen deposit flows stabilize, which is incredibly important in regional and also small banks, in some cases, uh, mostly uh, mostly reverse. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, speaking at the American Bankers Association on Tuesday, said the U.S. banking system remains sound. She also added, It's essential that Congress raise the debt ceiling and that they do it promptly um, in order not to inflict um, a truly catastrophic wound um, on our economy and financial system. But critics of the White House say that won't produce any solutions. Government spent too much and created inflation. So should I ignore it? Should we do exactly what the president say and just lift the debt ceiling and create more inflation and more banking problems? I'm John Lawrence reporting. Economists say the Fed's repeated rate hikes are an attempt to curb inflation back down to the central bank's goal of around 2%. However, recent economic data still shows strength in the labor market and in consumer spending. 938, 69 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Still to come, a look at a new series that portrays what life could look like in the future if we don't take care of our planet now. And we're back at 942. Right. Um, a little too, you know, damp yesterday, you know. rainy, no sun. Well, well, five minutes of sun. Okay, well, I thought maybe you were four. Maybe four. four. Maybe yeah. four. I thought you were going to go with bad hair day. But your oh. hair looks great, by the way. Well, That's not what you know, I'm saying. Hairspray. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been humid. Your hair looks great, too, Mark. Thank you. Always. <laughs> always on point. Uh, the humidity does go away at some point. Uh, really, Friday afternoons, what we're looking at as far as drier air surging in here. Temperatures right now 70 at Stinson, 69 Kelly, 68 Randolph. We've got southerly winds that continues to bring in that Gulf moisture. And as we look at the satellite picture, a lot of clouds. We've had a lot of drizzle, uh, although the drizzle is beginning to let up. <clears throat> and as we look at the satellite picture, there are some breaks here and there in the cloud cover, especially as you get up towards Fredericksburg. The sun may be trying to pop out. Uh, it'll take a little bit longer here in San Antonio as it often does, but the, the clouds will break up eventually this afternoon and you'll see temperatures jump a little bit higher than they were yesterday. We're thinking 80s this afternoon. 69 right now in town, 72 Pleasanton, one of the warm spots. 67 in Bulverde, 70 in New Braunfels. Here's your case at 12 hour forecast, 72 noon time. We're still going to call it cloudy, but the breaks begin to appear 3, 4 o'clock, and that should be enough to get our temperature up close to 80. Later today, with those southerly winds still staying a little bit breezy from time to time, we can see some gusts up close to 20. 77 at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 76 clouds build back in tonight, and we do the whole drizzle thing over again tomorrow. But it's the last morning where we're talking about drizzle. It's still very humid as we're getting a good fetch off the Gulf of Mexico out ahead of a, a storm system. Now, it's the one out west, though, that we really need to keep an eye on. It's this one here around California. See the spin, and this has been causing all sorts of issues for California. Very heavy rain there, some very gusty winds, but some of this energy works its way towards Texas as we get into tomorrow evening and into Friday. So let me uh, show you the uh, future cast here. Uh, clouds break up this afternoon, then tomorrow morning here comes the clouds, uh, the cloud cover again, and we start to get some of that patchy drizzle. This is tomorrow morning, and then by tomorrow afternoon, clouds break up again, and we're warm. Tomorrow we could be near 90 in some cases, so warm and humid. Then we turn our attention to the Edwards Plateau and Hill Country. So this is midnight Friday uh, overnight. Starting to see some storms developing out west, and that line works its way into the Hill Country. At this point, we still could be looking at some strong to severe storms early Friday morning, but the timing isn't really great on this. We don't have the daytime heating to really enhance these storms, so we could see one or two strong ones. Curve out Lakey, I'd say early, early Friday morning. But then that line just kind of breaks apart. By the time it gets to San Antonio, it's limping in here. So it may be nothing more than a line of broken showers, maybe a few rumbles of thunder Friday morning. We had thought originally maybe we'd get some strong storms out of this even here in town, but it's not looking that way. And so by 10 a.m., maybe a few showers here and there, and then those quickly push east. And by midday, we're clearing out, and then the dry air moves in Friday afternoon. Friday afternoon will be beautiful. Friday evening will be beautiful. So too will Saturday with that dry air in place. There's the risk for severe weather. And again, Thursday evening, it's going to be mainly out across the Edwards Plateau and Hill Country. 
Kerrville, Bandera, Yvali, there could be an isolated strong storm or two early, early Friday morning. Then as we get in Friday, as this storm system progresses east, there's going to be uh, quite a bit more severe weather, but it's well east of us. So we're talking Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas. Here's the extended forecast. 87 Thursday, 84 Friday. We'll go 81 on Saturday, but again, a beautiful day on Saturday. And then 80 Sunday as moisture begins to return. We get another frontal boundary and that could mean a few more showers showing up Monday and Tuesday. Okay. Justin, thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. Moving on, there's a new series out on Apple TV Plus. It's out now and has a lot of big stars in it. Stars like Meryl Streep, Heather Graham, Edward Norton, and Carrie Russell. It also has Diane Lane, Forrest Whitaker, and Tobey Maguire in it. And those are just some of the big stars in the series called Extrapolations. That's right. It looks at the planet, the climate, and how we deal with both. CNN's David Daniel gives us a look at the series, which is streaming now. I, for once, would love to wake up magically in a better world. What makes you think the world's going to get better? Extrapolations explores life on Earth in the not-so-distant future. This is not the life that I envisioned it to be. A man whose house is on fire is incredibly easy to negotiate with. It's a cautionary tale, like we, we do know this is coming and if we choose to not do something about it, what could happen? The series creators consulted with experts in crafting the conditions depicted over several decades. What we're gonna encounter in the next 50 years if things do or do not change. As long as our basic needs are guaranteed. Can you elaborate on the term basic needs? Unlimited refuge in Europe. Water. Water. They're trying to do uh, good deeds to make the world better, but nobody's perfect. Are you happy now? Are we bad people? The stories are so personal and honest and, and human. The interactions are human. We just don't ignore the situation of the world. We're just not, we're just not pretending that climate change doesn't exist. I felt a huge privilege to be part of it, um, to be part, to be an actor who is not an activist who's getting to tell stories and to share these stories that are so important. It gets to a basic point, which is when you choose this moment over the future, what is the cost of that? Stop being angry about the past. The future is now. This story is a gift to people who care about what we're living as a shared planet and a shared species. We cannot give up and go In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And if that's too much, there's always Ted Lasso. 948, 69 degrees. And when we come back, I sit down with John Wick himself. He's here? Yeah, no. Actor Keanu Reeves talks about this latest chapter coming to theaters this weekend and specifically about some of his favorite fight scenes in the movie. Sure. Yes, sure. John Wick Chapter 4 hits theaters this weekend, and Keanu Reeves returns to his popular role for a new and, yes, deadly mission. ABC's George Pinocchio sat down with the star to talk about this latest film. Keanu Reeves returns for an action-filled, adventure-filled, assassin-filled John Wick Chapter 4. The stunts alone are a sight to see. This car sequence is one of the best I have seen at the movies in a long time. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was really exciting to to try and do what Chad Stahelski, the director, had imagined. And so this idea of a car fight and gunfight and being chased continuously around the chaos that gets created in John Wick around the Arc de Triomphe was uh, really something special. You'll also see a wild and punishing scene on a long set of stairs. I fall down two stairs and I'm saying, can anyone help me up? You go down about 200 stairs and you're back in action. I know, well that's John Wick. I mean, I personally love seeing him suffer. And I think the filmmaker and Chad Stahelski likes seeing that John Wick suffer. and. And I think even like with the stair falls, it's like just a little bit more to where it almost becomes surreal. I'm going to die. 
Maybe not. John Wick Chapter 4 runs close to three hours, and you do need to stay through the end credits. The film is pretty much non-stop action, with deadly consequences everywhere, as Wick works to free himself from the killer lifestyle he's led for so long. We have the opportunity to try and cook this meal, this feast for everyone, and it's made with our love for you. And so it begins. John Wick Chapter 4 is rated R. It's in theaters this weekend. In Hollywood, George Pinocchio for ABC News. Big squeeze of the brake. I'm going to take a right turn. <laughs> There's Max and Eddie in the back seat. In an effort to boost recruitment, the San Antonio Police Department is hosting a women in policing event this weekend. So it's free and open to the public. And it's exciting, to say the least, tomorrow on GMSA at 9. Max Massey will give us an inside look at the physical obstacle course and the driving course, putting us inside the vehicle that mimics a police pursuit. So you're not going to want to miss that. That's tomorrow morning on GMSA at 9. All right, temperatures uh, right now are close to 70. We'll be, we'll be around 80 this afternoon. Some uh, drizzle now, but uh, that lets up. We'll see mostly cloudy uh, conditions later today. Windy tomorrow, some drizzle to start. We get some showers and storms maybe Thursday night, Friday morning. More so Friday morning here in San Antonio. But it does clear out Friday and Saturday looks awesome. We are getting closer to Fiesta, and if you're planning ahead, like a lot of folks do, you can get your tickets right now to join our KSAT Fiesta viewing parties for the Battle of Flowers and Fiesta Flambeau parades. So tickets for both events are now on sale, and the Battle of Flowers daytime parade is on April 28th. That's a Friday, and the Fiesta Flambeau night parade is on the 29th. So if you buy our KSAT Fiesta party tickets, you get assigned grandstand seating to watch the parade, two tacos and a drink, and a chance to meet your favorite KSAT personalities and a chance to experience a live broadcast. I was also told private restrooms, too. That's a big deal. <laughs> it is. To yes. find out more about how to get tickets, head over to our website at KSAT.com anytime you would like. It'll be here before you know it, and we are so excited about hosting Battle of Flowers again this year. Do you remember last year the weather was yes. perfect? Crisp and cold Whoa. early and then just yep. gorgeous yes. with a nice breeze during the parade itself. It was beautiful, but it was weird too because, I mean, we, we got here early for GMSA mm -hmm. and we were wearing coats yeah. to, start, yeah. to start the day, and then it was just a beautiful day. It was unusual. I can't guarantee that'll be the way it is this year. Mm -hmm. Right. We can hope. Yeah. So n no forecast for April 28th yet? Not yet. Oh, okay, keep us yet. posted. Well, we're Thank disappointed, you, Justin. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Have a good day.